Now, what is going on, everyone? Today, we're going to continue with our type ORM series and we're going to do migrations. So we already set up the project. We already created the entities and the relations. And now we actually want to bring all of that inside of our database. And the best way to do that is migrations. Don't use the synchronized feature because this one is bad, like it's not production ready. And if it crashes, it can cause like great damage. The first thing we should do is we should deactivate this. So go to ORM config and synchronize to false. So that means type ORM is not going to automatically try to adapt your database model based on your entities. We have to use migrations to systematically evolve our schema, which is the preferred way. So now that we have this, we can think about how can we actually generate these migrations. And there's a lot of documentation here, but I would encourage you to scroll to the bottom of this here to generating migrations. This is like my favorite part about type ORM because this thing can actually do all of that automatically. You don't have to do anything. And all you got to do is you have to run this command. Now this command might not be that easy to get right because there's some issues if you don't have type ORM installed. So that's why I'm just going to copy this and let's just work on a script together. So just as a reminder, the goal now is to generate some SQL that is going to create like the tables according to the entities we have. And let's just take this, let's go to our package.json and let's make a new script and let's say generate and let's paste this. Okay, so that's the first step. Now, the thing is, if you don't have type ORM installed locally, this one is not going to work. And that's why you need to use T as node and then node modules and then type ORM and then CLI.js. So now you're directly using the CLI from the node modules. And in more interestingly, this actually works. So if you get like weird errors about cannot about import statements or something like that, then just use this command here. Yeah, and I'm just going to name this migration name. So dash N is the option for how the migration is supposed to be named. And then there's another flag I always like to use, which, which is dash P. So dash P means pretty print. So it's going to generate SQL in a nice and human readable way. So not everything like in, in one statement, but like nicely formatted. I would say now that we have this script, we can save it. And I would say, let's just try this out and let's try to run this. So we can just run NPM run generate. Yes, nice. Bam, and you can see now you have a huge migration file, or well, not a huge one, but a big one. And in here, it generated all the SQL for you, man. Just imagine how much work this would be to write all of that by yourself. Super annoying, right? And it did everything, right? It did unique constraints, uh, primary keys, and also foreign keys you can see here. Wait, where are the foreign keys? Yeah, it even created this, this join table here and it created like some indexes and here are the foreign key constraints. So really nice. This is just something we can use. And the cool thing about this is we can directly put this into practice because uh, we already have this index.js file and that one is actually creating the connection and then trying to do something. So I'm just going to, ah, okay. I'm going to delete this. And the only thing we now have to do is inside of this file, we need to say uh, await connection.run migrations. So what this will do is it's going to see whether there are pending migrations. And if yes, it's going to run it. Yeah, so this is pretty nice. And that means if we now run this, this should actually work. And let's go to package.json and you can see we already have an npm start here. So I'm going to make a new terminal. And I'm going to pull this over here and I'm going to say npm start. And this should actually execute these migrations. Yeah, it did execute. Okay, perfect. So it did execute. Remember, we don't have a server running yet. So, and there was no error message. So I assume that this one worked. So let's go to our browser. Uh, let's go over here. I'm going to delete this and let's try to refresh it. And you can see, where is it here? Tables. Uh, now we have all these tables. Pretty nice, huh? So that means we just ran like one little command uh, which kind of gave us all these tables and you can see these tables or the columns here 
are the exact same that we specified. A little hint here, yeah, here you can see the user ID is actually join column because remember we decided to put the join column for the user on the channel. Uh, so yeah, that's nice. And it also created like this migrations table and this migrations table basically saves which migrations have already been run. So in case you were wondering, well, why, like how does this thing know whether it needs to run migrations? Well, it's because it saves what migrations it has already ran. Okay, cool. So that's it pretty much for the migrations. I think hmm, the only thing we could now do is we could do a little uh, smoke test, right? Yeah, maybe let's make a file. Let's call it smoke test dot typescript. Where's this test? Where's this file here? Yeah, here it is. And let's just try. Let's try to just insert like a few entities here. So I'm going to call this smoke test. And I'm going to pass a connection, so a database connection. And this is then a function we can directly call from, from our index.js file. Okay, so just let's just create a new user. Say user.email equals, I don't know, uh, test at test.com. And uh, user dot, what else do we have? First name equals uh, Jan. And then we can say await connection dot manager dot save and then user. So that means this thing should now save our user inside of the database. And we can try this out. So let's go to the index.js file and let's say await smoke test connection. So if we restart this, uh, we can say npm start. Technically speaking, this should now insert like a user inside of our database. Okay, so let's try to refresh this and let's see whether our user is there. Yep, here it is. Cool, huh? So that means all you have to do is create like some entity. And well, then it's just going to store it inside of the database. That's really, really neat. And what we can also do is we can create a channel, right? So const channel equals new channel. Uh, channel dot name equals uh, production coder. And I can say channel dot user, and this is interesting, equals user. So you can directly uh, reference. So that's really nice. And well, then you can say await connection dot manager dot safe channel. And there's one more caveat to this, actually. We made like the email address unique. So the next time the smoke test is going to run, it's going to create an error. And that's why we need to drop like all the tables, or well, that's typically what I do, to just drop like all the tables. So before you ex actually uh, execute this, just go here somewhere and go to the query tool. And I already have the statement prepared. I will also edit in the code, but the idea is to just say drop table channel a cascade and just do this for all tables. So this is like for all tables. One more note here, user is like a reserved keyword in Postgres. That's why you must put like these quotes in here. Okay, so if you execute this, bam, you drop like everything. Okay, and let's try it again. So we are going to go here, let's clear it, let's run npm start again. And now it should run like all the migrations and then afterwards it should insert this user and it should insert like the channel. And this is what we can check right now. Okay, so now it's done. So apparently there were no errors, so that's cool. Yeah, by the way, like the these migrations, they always take a little bit. So don't worry about that. Like the actual Postgres database is really, really fast. Yeah, nice, so cool. So here we have a channel and we should also have a user, right? Perfect. So, and as you can see here, you can insert as many entities as you want. I think as part of this example, I will probably add some more stuff to this file. So don't uh, be surprised if like the file on GitHub is slightly different than what we have here. But I would say that's it pretty much for the migrations. And this is also the reason why <laughs> type om is one of my favorite ORM because migrations are difficult, you know, and if you can just auto generate them, it's just amazing. Cool, so thank you so much for watching. Leave a like and subscribe to the channel. If you have a question, just leave me a comment. And uh, yeah, I would love to see you in the next video and uh, see you then. Bye-bye.